All right, so we'll finally get to check out Crusader Kings 3. Oh my god, dude, is the Game Pass wicked or what? Man, I hate to shill about the Game Pass, but... Dude, I just, uh, you know, because I spent a bunch of money on some board games recently, so I've been having to kind of hold off on some of the newer games, like Wasteland 3, Crusader Kings 3. But man, these games are both on Game Pass. It's fucking nuts. Okay, anyways, not here to talk about that. Not here to shill. Crusader Th Kings 3, if you're not familiar with Crusader Kings 2, it's an amazing strategy game that's, it's it's such a microcosm about the people. It's 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 an amazing game, and if you're and if you're into especially four time strategy games, you, you gotta look into the Crusader Crusader Kings uh, series. But anyways, so I'm firing it up for I did rip it around through the interface a little bit, but I'm actually gonna go through the tutorial, which I know is boring as hell. But this game is so dense, and for the amount of time that I've even played Crusader Kings two, like I put a lot of hours into that game, I still feel like I don't have a proper meta down for it. Um, you know, I understand the base mechanics of it, which took takes long enough to learn. So, gonna go through the tutorial, just kind of help me out, get freshened up, because I haven't played the Crusader Kings games for, God, probably a couple of years, to be honest. Uh, Crusader Kings 3 is a deep strategy game of dynasties and intrigue. If you are new to the world of Crusader Kings, we strongly re recommend you play the tutorial. In the tutorial, you will play as Petty King... Murkad? Murkchad? Mur 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 Murkad? Chad? We'll call him Chad. A ruler of Ireland. Lead your Chad family and dynasty to defeat your Chad enemies and become Chad King of Ireland. Petty King Chad. Play tutorial. I normally hate tutorials. Uh, like, or I shouldn't say I hate them. It's just I normally just enjoy firing into a game and learning for myself. But this game, Crusader Kings, is it's a game you need to do some homework on. Uh, welcome to Crusader Kings. You are a medieval ruler. Land is yours for the taking through clever marriages and diplomacy or by the way of the sword. There's no one way to win Crusader Kings, only different ways to enjoy the story that unfolds. Yes, this game is very... God, it's almost like a simulator. It's... Yeah, let's just do it. So I'm probably just going to play for about, you know, probably 10 or 15 minutes. Just kind of get my head around a little bit of the interface and then I'm spend some more time with it myself. Like I say, I've, I've, I've fired up for maybe five minutes and then I want to f try and get a video out on it. Uh, camera bait. Oh, God. Boring. Oh, wait. that But that was back. That was about like the political maps and stuff. Uh, different inf information is displayed at the different zoom levels. Detailed map, political map, and paper map. Okay. Good to know. Paper map looks very nice. And I think we can use the WASD keys now. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Good, 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 good. That looks great. Um, camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next. Uh, pausing. Uh, well, we know about that. Yeah, you usually want to play this game in pause when you're figuring everything out. Crusader King spans over hundreds of years and many generations. Right now, time is standing still because the game is paused. For this part of the tutorial, we'll keep the game paused while we walk you through some game concepts. Uh, sometimes we'll see blue highlighted text like this. This means, yeah, 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 yeah. To continue, place your cursor over highlighted text. <laughs> okay. The tutorial, it seems very thorough and thought out. You know, they knew that they needed to get something like this. That, uh, Anyways, hover over the high phrase and sign. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, sir. That's actually that's actually pretty clever of them. It's good for them to do that. Uh, now let's talk about the game. Everything takes place on the map before you. The world consists of large and small pieces of land, each belonging to someone based on their titles. Uh, the titles are represented by icons which elaborate coats of arms. I see, I see. Uh, the icon representing your realm is set by your primary title, which is the most important prestigious title you hold. Petty Kingdom of Munster. Okay. Oh, what is my guy like anyways? Temperate? That's good. Raffle. Wait a minute. I thought I, I thought I'm temperate, though. <laughs> impatient. Okay. I thought I was temperate. I'm raffle and impatient. <laughs> Flexible leader. Okay, cool. Let's keep going. If you click your character portrait, highlight it in the character view, the borders of your realm capital, Lumna, God, I can't pronounce any, and this this is Scot, this is supposed to be like English, Jesus Christ, or no, this is Ireland, but still, <laughs> English enough, <laughs> will light up, or uh, Latin. Outside of that will be the borders of your entire realm, Monster is your primary title, which is why your realm is named after it. You also hold the Earldom of Thomond. <laughs> as a separate title. If you zoom out, it will read Munster. Uh, where's it going to read Munster? Where, where's the Munst? Oh, over here, Ireland. Duh, dude, I'm over in England. Jeez, I'm an idiot. Um, where's the Munst? Oh, no, dude, I'm so... Ireland's over here, man. That's Wales. God, 
Get your head, you, you goddamn stoner, dude. Get your head together. There's Munster. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Okay, I swear I know some of my geography. Uh, okay, thank you. Next. Ruling over others. As a ruler, you can hold. Uh, you can only hold so much land on your own. You will often have other rulers helping with the administration of the realm by holding land titles within your border, making them your vassals. To find your own land, your domain, press the home key. Yeah, well, I kind of figured that out after I thought I was uh, after I thought Wales was Ireland for a while. <laughs> to find out your own land domain, yeah, yeah, home key. Uh, once close up, you can see blue labels on the baronies. Oh, okay, yeah. That belong to you. In this case, it will only be Lumen Lumenek? Lumenek? It's Munster. Where's Lumen Lumenek? Lumenich. Anyways. The Earldom of Ormond is held by your vassal. Where's Ormond? Because these are the Earldoms, aren't they? Nope. I got a lot of learning to still to learn still. Next. Uh uh, yeah, I understand. You got it. <laughs> Characters. You are playing as one of the many characters in this world, represented by character avatars. Your character is the ruler of the realm. You will need to make sure that your dynasty survives and thrives throughout the ages. Your title gives... Uh, the titles give you power and control over territory and other characters who might hold titles in land of their own. Click on your character. Okay. Characters have skills, indicating their proficiency within a certain field. Some are great talkers, while others prefer to make their intent clear on the battlefield. Your main skills are diplomacy, martial, stewardship, intrigue, learning. Okay, and they have, oh my god, it's definitely into the martial. Okay, you can see that. Uh, remember, since these are highlighted text, you can mouse over each for a breakdown of what they mean. Very, very nice. Traits. Uh, characters also have traits which can affect skills as well as how they react to things. These are illustrated by icons in your character view. Some traits tell you about a character's personality, like fickle, calm, or generous. Other traits are specific to how a character has lived their life, such as your education tra uh, trait or commander traits. You are temperate, wrathful, and impatient. We looked at that. From this, uh, you can see that your character typically lives a modest life, but expects others to do so also and is quick to anger when they don't. When a character chooses to behave against their personality traits, it causes stress. Oh, stress. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> traits can also impact how other characters react to you. Some people are impressed by the brave. Is that what that icon is? Yeah, brave trait. While a lustful character is more likely to feature its salacious gossip. <laughs> salacious. Traits influence other characters' morality and greed, which can affect both their friendly and hostile actions. All characters, yes all, have an opinion of one another, which drives their behavior. Low opinion can cause people to rise against you or be unwilling to help you. High opinion can, on the other hand, make characters more inclined to join your murder scheme or fall for your seduction. How to choose? Uh, oh, how you choose to interact with the other characters will often affect their opinion of you. Okay. Gold, gold. Wow. Okay, this is gonna be uh, this is gonna be like a 10-minute video of me reading tutorial to help. You further your goals, you will need gold. Among other things, gold pays for buildings, armies, and bribes. Gold is collected passively from both your holdings and your vassals as tax. Larger vassals are more important. Uh, are more oh, larger vassals and more important holdings tend to give you more tax. Makes sense. However, money is not all. Certain things can only be achieved by spending the right amount of prestige, or for religious matters, piety. You can see the current state of your gold prestige and piety in the bar in the top right corner. Gold, okay, we got a good whack of it. <clears throat> prestige, that's for being honorable and awesome, I'm sure. Piety is, you know, kissing up to the Pope. Renown. Cool. Next. Your prestige tells us how respected you are. It can be earned over time by holding lots of titles, for example, or act actively such as by marrying into prestigious dynasties or fighting as an ally, ally in wars. Whenever you earn prestige, you build towards your next level of fame. Higher levels of fame make other characters think better of you and bring powerful ways to wage war. Okay. Some actions cost prestige, like declaring war. These That's right. Oh, man. Okay, this is all this Crusader Kings 2 stuff is coming back. Jesus, Jesus. Uh, some actions cost prestige. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These allow you to leverage your celebrity for your own benefit. And characters won't think of SU for using them. Spending prestige does not affect your level of fame progress, uh, just your current prestige. Okay, 
Good to know, good to know. With a lot of piety, you will have an easier time interacting with your head of faith. As you are Catholic, this is the Pope. Piety can be gained passively from learning skills, from virtuous traits, or actively from choosing to do religious things, such as going on a pilgrimage. You also have a level of devotion which builds over time whenever you gain piety and can have positive effects for your character. Similar to prestige, some actions require you to spend piety, like declaring holy wars, or if you want to create a new faith. Ooh, make new faith, holy crap. Spending piety like this is normal, and characters won't think worse of you for it. I understand. Lifestyles. As well as traits, your character can also pick a lifestyle. There are five lifestyles, one for each skill. Lifestyles represent what you put most, uh, the most effort into day to day. And each one has several focuses inside relating to it. Every focus gives you a unique bonus and makes events associated with that focus more likely to happen. To continue, click on the lifestyle button. Uh, lifestyle button? Where's that? Oh, okay. Oh, here we go. Nice. Focus. Click on any lifestyle to see its focuses. As time goes by, your character will learn <coughs> will earn lifestyle experience for maintaining a particular lifestyle. When you acquire enough lifestyle experience, you can select one of the lifestyle perks from any of its trees. Perks represent you practicing and developing yourself over time and offer unique ba uh, bonuses, like special traits, or unlock lifestyle-specific mechanics and content, such as the ability to start abduction schemes. What? That's mean. As an example, the strategy, authority, as well as the chivalry focus all give martial experience, which can be used to buy any of the martial lifestyle perks. The perk tree, in turn, leads to different lifestyle traits. Choose a focus to continue. Um, well, my guy was super martially. I should probably just be in it. Keep going with that. Because of your martial education, you gain 30% more experience in this lifestyle. Oh yeah, let's do it. We're going militant. Um, choose focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Strategy focus. Author authorital focus or shiv. Not too blunt, but honor, honor. Um, martial plus three. Control growth. That uh, this one actually looks pretty good. Dread gain plus twenty percent. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. Dread is a measure of how feared a ruler is. Wow. Control. That sounds good. Prowess attraction. Yeah. Uh, that actually sounds good too. What's prowess? Prowess is a secondary skill that reflects the character's aptitude in personal combat. A high prowess skill means they are more likely to survive and perform well. Both as knights in battles and in duels. Uh, God, excuse me. Attraction. Oh yeah, we better. We're gonna be pimping. Uh, we'll go through the authority focus. Thank you, sir. I understand. Barely. <laughs> Other characters. Now, having selected a focus, we can move on to other people. Um, if you're new to this game, interacting with other characters is key and you have many options how to do so. You can right-click on a character portrait, including your own, to get a list of potential interactions, such as arranging a marriage, initiating a scheme. This is also where you start wars, but let's try something else first. Open your character view, right-click on your hair's character portrait, and see what interactions are available. My hair, isn't that like my kid or something? Or, yeah. Okay, oh, so he's got him up there. Yeah, so he's my kid. Your son, hair and knight. Irrational Lackey. <laughs> Brian Mack. Oh, it's Brian! Nice! It's me! <laughs> okay. Uh, so we're right-clicking on this mofo. Let's start with the basics. Everybody likes gold. Try sending a bribe to your hair. I gotta bribe my own kid? I guess so. Uh, where's bribe? Diplomacy, personal... Oh, send gift? Is that the bribe? Hostile. Grant two title. Two more. Uh, try and... <clears throat> yeah, send gift. That's it. Most interactions, will uh, most interactions will bring up a second window with details. When selected, you can confirm or cancel an action in this window. Try to use and confirm a send gift interaction with your hair. Okay. Send gift. Oh, I don't have a spouse? Man, I gotta hook up. Um, effects on you. Pays 50 gold to Brian. Um, Bri Brian? Uh, effects on Brian Mac. Merchad. Brian. <laughs> I can't read any of this, dude. I'm tired. <laughs> Uh, gain 10 opinion of you. Okay, my kid's gonna like me more for 50 bucks. Do it! <laughs> well done! You have successfully increased somebody's opinion of you. Of you. Uh, certain opinion modifiers last forever, like family bonds. Others will wane over time, like the fading memory of receiving a monetary gift. If you hover your cursor uh, over the opinion number of another character, you can see exactly where their various numbers are coming from. It is due to a marriage alliance, a 
Um, gift of gold, or simply that they appreciate your honest nature. Aww. How wholesome. Playing a family. Next, let's talk about your dynasty. As the game goes on, unless your character meets with an untimely accident or terrible disease, they will grow old and eventually die. The story doesn't end there. It's only game over if you do not have a hair of your own dynasty. Okay. As long as you have uh, hairs uh, of your dynasty, your legacy will live on. When your character dies, you simply start playing as the new one, the player hair. Am I saying that? Hair? Hair? Yeah. Depending on your type of succession uh, your realm has... This is likely to be one of your children, perhaps one that you groomed into the role of a ruler. Your dynasty has its own coat of arms, which is currently highlighted, and can be clicked for more information. You don't need to do anything with this now, but if you want to look at the details of your dynasty later, it can be focused here. Okay. House Brian... Brian... Brian I, I, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm bad right now. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Succession laws. Oh my god. What is this? This is number seven. <clears throat> Succession laws. Determine how all titles and resources are divided between the hairs when a character dies. You currently only have, oh, the will, only have one hair, but let's take a look anyways. In some cases, when you take over your new character, you may even find that they are responsible for the untimely demise of your previous ruler. Oh my god. Open the realm view on the right side of the screen. Inspect the succession tab. Oh wow, look at all these tabs over here. Oh my god. Yeah, this interface is, is non-stop. That's why the tutorial is important. <laughs> Uh, succession, let's take a look. Uh, as a member of your dynasty, you also have renown shared by everyone in your dynasty. Renown goes up whenever anyone in your dynasty gets prestige and reflects how famous or infamous your family is rather than just you. Making sig significant strides in your renown will echo down the generations for your descendants, slowly increasing your level of splendor. As the dynasty head, the most powerful member of your dynasty, renown will allow you to unlock dynasty le legacies that will benefit all of you. Okay. I barely understand. Marriage. To ensure the future of your dynasty, you need family members. It helps if you are married. But we cannot promise that you will marry for love. Click on your character. Let's get married. For unmarried characters in your domain, you can set up marriages or betrothals. Uh, betrothed. By right-clicking on the character and choosing Find Spouse or Arrange mar Marriage. Okay. Oh, what's the difference? Between two characters. I probably, some, I probably have to know somebody. Uh, we're finding a spouse. Let's go for it. Uh, choose Finding a Spouse. Open the list of potential spouses. They hail from courts all over the world. Choosing Arrange Marriage uh, also opens a list of potential spouses, but only with people from the court of the character you clicked. Your own character is visible on the left. Because this marriage needs your approval, whoever is the liege of the other spouse will appear on the right side as the union will need their approval as well. Arranged marriage can be useful for matchmaking between your courtiers uh, or for setting up specific marriage alliance. For now, find spouse is more relevant for our purpose. Okay. All right, let's look at these hotties. What do we got? There are many factors to consider when choosing a spouse. To help you out, there is a filter available for sorting. So, hot or not? Among things to consider, there are alliance skills, personality traits, expected fertility, and more. Some traits are congenial, congenial, meaning that they might be inherited by your children. Perhaps someone with a trait like that is a good place to start. Okay. Oh, I see. Um, some of all skills? Sure. Oh, boy. Oh, I see. Talk wow, look at the filters. Jesus Christ. Um, okay, well, I don't want to spend forever on this. Is that their age? No, no, no. What's the... <clears throat> oh, she looks... Dude, she looks pissed. <laughs> no! Not... No. Reject. Uh, clear character. Get out of here. <laughs> dude, she looks so mad. Whoa, hello. Uh, children's marriage will be born into house. Chance of children, medium... Okay. When you have selected two people for your marriage, you are presented with the details of the union, along with additional options such as having their marriage be matrilineal. I've never heard of that. Mat matrilineal? Oh, God. Children marriage. Children will be born into their mother's house. What? No. Uh-uh. It's not how this is. It's not how this is going, man. Uh. Yeah. Send proposal. Alliance form with Prince Bloody Deep. God, I can't say any of this shit. 
Greetings, Petty King Mer uh, Chad of Munster. I gladly accept your marriage proposal. You will be joined with my daughter, Hinda. I didn't even see her name. In holy matrimony. May Saint Brigham bless your union. Prince Bleden. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake, sign. Thank you. <laughs> I barely understand. Uh, okay, number nine. Dynasty and house. Family is important. The player hair will always come from your dynasty and most often from your house. In the future, it won't hurt to keep an eye on your family, the line of succession. Depending on the succession laws, you might end up inheriting titles, along with the land of vassals, from your relatives. Okay. Uh, number nine. Continue. Not everyone in your dynasty will be landowners, but every plot of land on the map has an owner. Sometimes that owner is you, sometimes it's one of your vassals, and sometimes it's another realm entirely, many of whom also have or have or are vassals. Titles. Okay, this is what I need to focus on. Count. Okay, so it goes county, count, countess, Dutch, kingdom, empire. Okay, that's that's all pretty obvious. But it's yeah, it's county before duchy. That's what I thought. Uh, every tier belongs to a title, one rank up the chain. Every county is technically part of a ditch. Every ditch is technically part of king, and every kingdom Chad is technically part of an emperor Chad. Note there are many dynamic names. Yada yada yada. Oh boy. We say technically because as Crusader Kings uh, lets you play with history, there is no way to guarantee that a king is actually in charge of all the titles that his kingdom is supposed to contain within its borders. We call this title hierarchy de jour. Well, oh God. And if the structure has been broken, it is often possible to declare war over such territories. Change the Tucci title map mode. Return realm map mode. Okay. Uh, isn't that just by like zooming in? Nope. Uh, oh, there it is. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay. Dutchy. Oh, I see. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. I barely understand. Your holdings, number 10. The de jure. Oh, God. Uh, of the Munster uh, consists of three counties. Their names should be visible on the map. Thamond, held by you. Desmond, held by neighbor and ruler. And Ormond, held by your vassal. These counties are made up of smaller pieces of land called baronies. It's on this level we find your holdings. Holdings represent settlements in your land. Okay. Holdings provide different levels of taxes and levies, as well as buildings that you can construct and upgrade, depending on your holding type. Click on your capital. Uh, holding and order the construction of a building. Oh, here we go. Okay, what are we building? Lookout towers. Click on Okay, what are we going to build? Just sit, go for the whatever. Bastion current walls, small harbor, lookout towers, plus 50 levies. Okay. Archer damage plus 100 levies. Ooh. Sure. Ooh. Bumping up the tax would be good, though. Sure, let's go for uh, bastions and current walls. Upgrade. Going to take three years? Holy crap. Do it. Don't care. Well done. It takes some time for the building to be ready, though. Uh, Lumine Luminec? God, wasn't built in a day. <laughs> sure. Every holding provides taxes to their holder. If that holding is a vassal, they will also pay taxes on their, uh, to their liege. Taxes provide main source of income. Obligations can affect how high or how low these taxes are. Times of war also affect the level of control in a county, which, turns, which in turn affects taxes. Barely understand. Moving on to 11. Wow, what, what am I at here? Crap, I'm at like... Is that 25 minutes already? Just about 24 minutes. Man, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this a break. I'm going to... Well, let's... Let's see. Um, I kind of want to save it because I still want to go through um, the tutorial. Yeah. Save. I still want to go through the tutorial, but I, I kind of want to just fire into uh, just a random game right off the bat here. I mean, Rainier... Yeah, because I, I need to finish the tutorial. There's so much to this game. But let's just play as any ruler. Yeah, that's this is such a neat part of the game is that it is such a sandbox. And not only that, like the microcosm of it, you know, it's like you can play as, you know, God, play as the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. Which I would assume is over at the capital here. Yeah, you play as this kid who's the emperor of the Holy Ro Roman Empire. Fuck me, kid. Jeez. Then you can do, go down to, God, you can play as this guy. Go down to the kid. Like you say, the duchies, the barons, and all that stuff. Is this still the monster? Oh yeah, it is. Um, yeah. So let's go up to Scotland. Just play as this king of Scotland for a minute. 
And I just want to be able to look at some of the interface myself. Yeah, here's my dude. It's my woman. Do I got kids? Yeah, I got a few kids. Wrathful, cynical, arrogant, charismatic negotiator. Oh man, yeah, God, there is so much to this game. It's insane. Very cool. Looking for, gonna have to spend more time on it, and then probably put another video up where I'm actually playing through a campaign or through a game, kind of explain where where I'm at. But man, I have so much fun, uh, uh, so much to learn about this game still. Anyways, hope that was helpful for the tutorial there. I'm going to be going over more of it and probably post that as well. Thanks for checking out the video, guys. Make sure to check this game out and do your homework. Thanks a lot. Take care.